believe it. <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Freaking welcome and hello. Welcome to 2000, 2020. What? 2020. 2020. Can you believe that? Today is Thursday. Today is the first Thursday of 2020, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I got a full on vlog planned out for everybody tonight. Of course, we're going to be talking about the uh, flavor ban that's kind of a flavor ban that's not really a flavor ban. It's only a flavor ban for some things, but they don't. I don't think they quite know what this flavor ban is for. So we're gonna we're gonna unpack it just a little bit. I'm gonna give you my thoughts of of what I've read so far about this weird move. Uh, what I feel like is a real weird move to do on New Year's Day, especially. I mean, right before Thanksgiving, shops were getting closed down in certain states, and now suddenly it seems like everything has has flip flopped, but not not really flip-flopped, like it's not a real win. It doesn't feel like a real win, and I don't feel like we should consider it like a real win, even though it still feels kind of like a win. It's just very confusing. It's, it's more confusing to me than anything else. Uh, but in addition to that, which we're gonna be talking about news and advocacy more towards the end of the vlog, I do have a beer. We're gonna be talking about what I've been vaping. I got a whole mess of mail to open up. I do have a very random liquid tasting. We're gonna be doing the super chats at the end of every segment if the super chats are actually activated. I hate to be the YouTube guy that complains about YouTube all the time, but man, YouTube is obnoxious. Man, YouTube is obnoxious. Okay, we'll be good. We got a test there for the super chat. We'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. Samuel Williams, the founding father, liberty and justice for all, maybe. Don't back down, never stop fighting. That's right. Don't back down, never stop fighting. I feel like the announcement today just isn't good enough. Man, it's just not good enough. It's just, I, I'm still real, I'm still kind of absorbing it and unpacking it. So we're gonna go through that as kind of as it happens, I guess. But uh, yeah, we got we got a pretty full vlog this week. So the first thing actually that I want to do, I think we're gonna hear from one of my fa one of my subscribers. Uh, this is just my new favorite thing to do, where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. Um, so right now. Where's the button? You know, sometimes the screen, the stream deck isn't as uh, isn't as useful as just clicking on the screen, especially when you don't set up your stream deck ahead of time to show that one thing. Unbelievable. Anyway, right now we are going to hear from Ashley. Hey Nick, Ashley here. Uh, just wanted to start out by saying I appreciate everything you do for the industry. Um, I've been fighting a lot harder recently due to these ridiculous bans being put into place. Like you said it yourself, Charlie Baker from Massachusetts has lost his goddamn mind. <laughs> anyway, I've been smoke free since 2013. Never felt healthier in my life. Got strawberry lemonade in here today. Let's keep on vaping. Justice, liberty, and adult choice has never tasted so good. <laughs> I love that. I love that at the end what Ashley says, look, liberty, and justice and adult choice never tasted so good. Oh, toast. Cheers to that. This is basically that uh, cocoa is basically all I've been vaping, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there in a second. What I want to do right now, and if anybody else out there, yeah, definitely will definitely shout out Ashley. If anybody else out there has a video similar to that that they wanted to see here on this here vlog program, you can uh, shout out yourself, your animals, your 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 wife, husband, significant, other, your, your, your shop, your, your favorite uh, recording artist. I don't know. Send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark the email that one thing chances are I'll see the attachment but I still like to see that one thing uh, that one thing in there um, if you want to send it out over that would be fantastic so let's what the hectic is happening here get rid of that get rid of that well it's like I haven't streamed in a really long time I feel like I'm brand new here I feel like this is my first stream on YouTube hey guy I'm grim green this is my YouTube what Welcome to my YouTube, you guys. Let's drink some beer. So 
So the first very, very sad, sad casualty of 2020 is that my my luchador bottle opener ha has definitely lost his head. It just broke off today during the podcast. I was really, really bummed out. Just com broke completely off and now I have a headless luchador. But you know what? It still works. <laughs> he might be headless, but he still works. So I wanted to start off... 2000 what how am i going to say this 2020 i guess we're calling it 2020 now and not 2019 2020 slow chat should be on ruby ru Sh slow chat should be on let me double check let me double check my settings i can't i don't think i do uh, yeah it should be should be on there the slow chat should be on uh, I don't know how to change it at this point in the game. <laughs> I just don't know. So it's going to be, that's, that's, that's how it is. No, it's not on. It's slow chat is not on. All right. Well, we're going to try to, I don't know how to change it now at this point. Can I do that? Nope. That doesn't do anything. Tech support. Tech support. I don't know how to, oh wait, here, let me do settings, maybe, uh, live chat, uh, slow mode, okay, save, is slow mode on now, it looks like slow mode might be on now, slow mode is on, slow mode is on, it's on now, okay, good, all right, well, we got that, we got that, Slow mode's on. It doesn't look like it's slowed down at all. That's fine. It doesn't look like it's slowed down at all. But we did it. We did it. Dan. See, I told you. Hi, I'm Grim Green. This Welcome to my first YouTube video. I haven't done this in a real long time. Welcome to my first YouTube video. We're going to be drinking some beer today. So I want to start 2020 off with something good. Just a good beer to get us into this new year in a really good and serious way. So this is kind of something we've been saving for a little bit. This is a, this is a modern time special release. Uh, it's called Haunted Stars. It's an imperial rye porter uh, rocking a chewy, chocolatey, spicy malt character that coats the mouth and warms the cockles. <laughs> it starts off with rich and full-bodied with a velveteen texture and creamy dark chocolate flavor and finishes with lingering rye spiciness and pleasing earthiness. Oh, pleasing earthiness. How do you not want to drink that? How do you not want to consume that? So I'm going to use my headless luchador. We're going to... Oh, we're going to open up this beer. I'm even going to be pouring it into my special modern times little uh, chalice glass here. In fact, ooh, let's pour this in. Ooh, let's pour this right here like this. Oh, look at that happening. It's going to pour dark. It's going to pour dark. If you like the way this beer is pouring, just go ahead and hit that like button. You see that like button down there? How do you not like this? Look at that. Like this. <laughs> How do you <laughs> I am really bad at being a YouTuber. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to my first YouTube. Press the like button. So uh, this is a beer I've had before. I've had this uh, plenty of times before. I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I'm just going to dig into this. Cheers. Welcome to 2020. Here's to you guys. Yeah. Oh, man. Rye spiciness for days it's got like a it's got like this weird i om, i want to call it musty or something like that but not a negative term for musty like i guess rich like a musty really rich sort of cedary rye flavor to it very very heavy very very thick thick in the mouth It's almost got a little bit of like, a, I can't even explain it. Like, like IPA characteristic to it. Like a sort, like a slightly tangy, sort of IPA characteristic to it. But it's, it's, it's a characteristic coming from a beer that sh sh like shouldn't have that characteristic. So, it's sticking out to me as really unique, heavy, malty. That rye is incredible 
heavy beer. This is a deep, heavy beer. This is a winter time, winter time beer. This isn't no Takati by the pool in the summer beer. I don't know what I'm talking about, but it is. Mm, I know. Chris Mix World. Musty. I'm really selling it, aren't I? You're thinking, I'm going to go buy this beer now because Grim Green said it was musty. I'm kind of. I can't think of another word to describe what I'm tasting other than I think of like mustiness, but not like a bad way. Like back in the day when we used to taste coffee, and I think I mentioned this every single time we do a beer tasting, but musty was something we used to describe coffee and it was like a negative flavor attribute to the coffee. I get something similar out of this beer, similar vibe of flavor, but it's not like in a negative way. Let's just pair this with something. I have literally nothing to pair it with. Let's try this. How are these coils doing? All right, let's try this. I got some original Turkish blend. This is his original custard Turkish blend and a three milligram. I got this on top of that sweet, sweet hexome that I unboxed in that angry video a few weeks ago, but it's got like that tattoo flash art on it. And one thing that I didn't notice is This heart right here, it says Grim in it. They put Grim right in that little heart. That's so cool. That's just so cool. Anyway, this could be a good pairing. If not this, maybe Boule Bolu. I don't know. I don't know what would pair with this. Maybe maybe I'll break out that Icos, huh? We'll get some real some real uh, t- tobacco flavoring here to pair with this beer. Maybe I'll break out that Icos. I'm not. I'm not going to. I just wanted to clear that up right away. I don't want anybody thinking while I sit in here and sip this beer. I don't need anybody watching going, is he really going to get out that Icos? Is he really going to vape that Icos? Is he really going to pair the Icos with an Imperial Rye Porter? The answer is no. I just, that was, I was, that was a joke. That was what, that's what we call joking around. Mm-hmm. Rock and roll. That is rocking. That is a dang good pairing. I just love some, some nicotine and some alcohol. Love it. And you know why I love it? I don't know. I just love it. It's the flavor. It's the taste. I'm a free adult American and I get to choose what I love. And that is a freaking delicious, delicious pairing. Now, here's the thing. I don't know anything about this beer. I mean... I know about this beer. I'm just interested to see what Beer Advocate has to say about it. You know, Modern Times Haunted Stars spelled every word correct except for modern and haunted. So let me know what you think about that. Yeah, 90% over there on the Big Beer Advocate. 90%. 8% ABV Rye Imperial Porter. Yeah, chocolatey spicy malt character that there was this velveteen texture creamy dark chocolate maybe that's what i'm thinking of as musty is that like dark chocolate like cacao you know flavor cacao flavor but uh delicious <sighs> delicious delicious mm. delicious so uh moving on from that let's uh let's see what's going on in super chat land over here Let's see what's going on in Super Chat land. Uh, Liberty and justice for all? No, maybe I don't back down. Samuel Williams, all right. Eifer, uh, just wondering if you got the Moti Mungbean video I sent. Did you send me a Moti Mungbean video? Because I don't think I've seen it. I don't think I've seen it. If It might be in my inbox uh, email, but I don't think I've seen that, Eifer. I would love to see your reaction to the mung bean. I mean, that would be amazing. I want to see everybody's reaction to the mung bean. Uh, Chad, very gracious of you. Looking forward to your shows. Keep being awesome. I'm not really that awesome, but I like that you think that I'm awesome. So I'm going to keep thinking that that you think that I'm awesome. Yeah. Steve, very gracious of you. Is that gray hair I see under Rick's hat, under Nick's hat? Oh, yeah. Uh, This is out of control. This is silly. This is dumb. I haven't had this long of a hair in years and years. And it's just, uh, it's just growing out of control. It's it's crazy. It, look at this. What look is this? This is not a good look for me. 
This is not a good look for anybody. It's just happening. You, you, you can't fight it. Gray hair everywhere. Jim, very gracious of you. What's the correct water to coffee ratio for cold brew? And yeah, we keep on vaping. Well, it just depends on how you want to brew cold brew. Cold brew is notoriously stronger than a regular brewed cup of coffee. So you do double, you double it up. You Instead of doing six, uh, instead of doing two tablespoons for every six ounces of water, you would do four tablespoons for every six ounces of water. And then we, and then you get the, that, that good strength strong strong cold brew give that a shot eifer are you a bad youtuber you are a bad youtuber you haven't mentioned the notification bell once i know i don't mention who mentions that why would you why would you mention there's too many things to mention there's too many responsibilities as a youtuber it's silly it's like oh here learn all this software oh don't forget to mention the like button every 15 seconds did you guys hit that like button Hit that like button. Yeah, too much time with Bogan. Is that why I'm a bad YouTuber? Wait, are you calling Bogan a bad YouTuber justice? Because that's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally just kidding. Um, oh, happy 2020 green family. That's my, uh, yeah, that's my cousin Barbara. Happy, happy uh, new year to you as well. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, just wanted to say that I'm getting married in September to the love of my life. Shout out to my fiance. Heather for getting me back to vaping. Hell yeah, Kevin. We're shouting out Heather for getting Kevin back into vaping. And you guys are getting married in September. Oh, that's great. My heart is full of love for you guys. Congratulations. That's awesome. That's super awesome. Jake Scrapwood, new Grim, sounds like a Justin Roiland character. Oh, hey guys, new Grim here. Just being a YouTuber, <laughs> this is my first YouTube. So hit that like button. That does sound too much like a Justin Roiland character. Maybe Justin Roiland should have me do a character voice on Rick and Morty. You have me come in. I could be new Nick. Check it out, you guys. I could be new Nick, too. I could be on Rick and Morty. No? All right. Eifer, very gracious of you. Sent it after the last vlog. You know what? I'll look. I'll look, Eifer. I apologize. I, I didn't see anything, but I will look. Nick, very, very gracious of you. You didn't say anything, but you still, you still contributed. Michelle Lynn, very gracious of you. First time viewer. Great show. Yeah, house to the shed, be in the shed. All right. All right, well, uh, real quickly, I just want to talk about a few things that I have been vaping before I get to a pile of mail. And it's some mail that I kept. Um, there's, a, there's a package in here from Kent. There's a package in here from Turk. I think it's some like, actually some like holiday Christmas gifty items um, that I was saving for, for this vlog. So we're gonna to get to opening those. Really, I haven't been vaping that much over this holiday break. Um, I got the Coco right when I got home from New Zealand and the Coco from UL has not left my hand. I was actually legitimately, and my wife can back me up on this, legitimately wearing the Coco on a chain around my neck all day, all night all day and I was just vaping it and using it and the cocoa is amazing and the Caliburn pods are amazing and I need to fill up this cocoa again today and they make it this is a six milligram hang on where'd you go prohibition six milligram prohibition the speakeasy it's the root beer the Caliburn pods are just so easy to fill up Blah. oh it didn't get to the other side doesn't matter there's two holes Blah top it off on this side a little bit, Blah, you're good to go. I love it. I absolutely, I can't even get enough of it. I can't even get enough of it. In fact, this whole winter break has literally just been a you well kick. And I want to point out that this is not uh, sponsored in any capacity by you well. I've been using the cocoa like an insane person. I also opened up the you well crown pod and this was supposed to be red but it looks very much like the old uh, e-leaf pink that's definitely e-leaf pink on there and i was bummed because i really kind of wanted it to be red i filled this up with three milligram coil spill rich kids of instagram um it's on the openest airflow but i've been still been doing mouth to lung with it just because it's it's real nice and flavorful and satisfying Just real nice and flavorful and satisfying. So I've been loving that from UL. And then lastly, the last thing I've been using 
from UL is I opened up this nunchaku simply because I wanted to taste a liquid. And uh, I know Casey Pickle briefed me on this liquid before the vlog and I completely forgot about everything about it. But this is a new rescued e-liquid. It's called Mika and they are still, so rescued e-liquid is they do dog rescues as well and they name their liquids after rescued dogs, which is why there's like Ben, you know? So they have some new liquids coming out that are named after other people in the industry's dogs. As far as I understand it, that's how it's going to go. And so this one is called Mika, and this is a vanilla uh, peppermint. And I just wanted to vape it during Christmas, and I didn't really have anything like ready to go. So I ripped open this, this rainbow. Of course, I opened the rainbow one. The rainbow UL Nunchaku. It's been pretty rad. I mean, honestly... There's not much to it, you know? It's the simplest thing, one battery, one coil head, a sub ohm tank, you fill it with liquid, you vape it. Like, it, we, this has existed for 10 years now. It, there's nothing new under the sun here. But it does give me pretty good flavor, and I have really been enjoying this vanilla peppermint menthol flavor. It's felt uh, very, very holidays and very Christmassy to me, and I really like that. Yeah, so that's really been rocking too. Um, I've also been passively vaping that Raytel XS. This is that uh, rebuildable all-in-one pod. It's got a, a very large pod and like a large RBA base in there. Single 18650. This is from uh, Mech Life. Mech Life. Mech Life. Uh, this is full of transistor Tango Melon. It's been fine. Just a single coil in here, 20 watts. Can't. Uh, sorry. Burp life. Wait. Why? Yeah, Mika. Yeah. <laughs> Mika. Mika. It, yeah, okay. It should be on slow mode. We're good now. You did it. Uh, all right. Okay, here we go. I got through all my text messages. But uh, I've been vaping it. It's fine. This is just round wire. Can't thou, as P. Basardo used to say. Round wire build. I think it was like a two and a half millimeters. It's basically just the ruby build in here. Came out to 0.95. I've been rocking it at 20 watts. Great. I mean, this is honestly a really rad rebuildable AIO. I have a few gripes with it. I'm going to do a full video soon, but I've got a few... I've got a few gripes with that. Just a few. Just only like seven. Just kidding. Less than that. Um, ghost Mac still hanging in there with the Ghost Mac dead goat combo. Boule Bolu on the inside. Still don't love this switch. Still don't love this switch. But that's okay. That's delicious. Uh, you guys saw the Hexome. And then lastly but not leastly, I'm not going to not show off the Apaca custom bone doors or doors plates i guess for the grim kit it's just so cool just just so cool mesh coil head in here this is filled up with six milligram blueberry uh what the crap blueberry granola bar that's the word i'm looking for granola bar mesh coil head mouthed along all day long it's just awesome I've really been into that like mesh coil head, loose airflow, mouth to lung vaping. Like that's just what I've been enjoying. That's what the Cali burn kind of is. That's definitely what the crown is. It's definitely what the grim kit is. I don't know what it is. I've just, it's just something I've uh, desperately been enjoying. So now that's more or less what I've been uh, been vaping. And I think of what I want to do right now. What, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing awesome on time tonight, you guys. Awesome on time tonight. So what I'm going to do right now, we are going to get to some, uh, there it is, mail. And see, some of these are like big packages too many packages like this is huge this is huge and that's what leads me to believe that it is a uh that's what leads me wait why is the mail what just happened is that weird 
What just happened right there? Did everything go wacky for a second? All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Where's my uh, safety knife? No, I won't use that. And again, if you're here, just hit that like button. It's no big deal. I would really appreciate it. Um, so this is a really large package, which that's what leads me to believe that it could be uh, a gift of some sort. Um, there are a few, there's two packages in here I know from, uh, from part of my Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club. And I don't know what this is. And I don't know what's in here. Ooh. Oh, oh, I think I know what this is. Oh, I think I know what this is. Yes. I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is. It's just a lot of bubble wrap. That's all. Just, just a bunch of bubble wrap, you guys. Oh, so much bubble wrap. Oh, I do know what this is. So this is a homemade gift that is awesome awesomeness it's awesomeness in motion oh i love this i love this so much hang on i gotta get this open this is the cool this is just one of the coolest things i've ever seen this is a handmade homemade gift that is okay I'll just stop hyping it up right now and I'll get to opening it. I'll get to opening it. Are you, is my wife in the chat? Are you in the chat? I get nervous when my wife's in the chat for some reason. Look at this, okay? Look at this. Is this the coolest thing you've ever seen? Answer, the answer is yes. Of course it is. How amazing is this? I, I love this. I absolutely, absolutely love this. Whisper Farm Woodworking 2019. Whisper Farm Woodworking 2019. Awesome. Awesome. I love this so much. And it's like, it's not, this isn't, I, this isn't just painted on here. This is like an inlay. This is like inlaid in here. And the stormtrooper and the roses. I mean, holy crap, that's awesome. Holy crap, this is awesome. Hang on, I'm gonna put this on my couch for right now. Because there's literature. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at look at Chubby Nick and look at baby Kent. There he is. This is the man who sent it to us. I don't know what event this was from. Yeah, look at that. Old school. Look at little baby Kent. Look at little baby Kent. Look at little baby Kent. Oh, look at little baby Kent. Uh, I don't want to read this whole thing on the watching you for years. Yeah, my husband and I, over 10 years, everything he quit. He tried e-cigs, but he didn't know enough about them. I just don't want to read that. I don't know if there's anything you know personal or something on here. I don't want to put it out there into the world if they don't want it out there in the world. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. It might be easier to go to the Whisper Farm Woodworking on YouTube. All right. Everybody remember that. Whisper Farm Woodworking. Uh, we got Tiffany and London McDaniel. Awesome. Awesome. You guys, Tiffany and London, thank you so much. This is an incredible gift. I, I love this. I cherish this. Uh, I, mean, I know I have the perfect place to put it the perfect place right here where I can look at it every single day. I, amazing. I mean, really a touching gift, really a very heartwarming gift. And just thank you. And just thank you for days. That was awesome. Whisper for it. Thank you. Oh, you're in the chat right now. Thank you guys. Seriously. That is awesome. How, I mean, come on. That's amazing. That is awesome. Damn it, that's cool. Damn it, that's cool. Wow, we really got off to a really strong start, you know? It's like, what other packages are going to kind of... Rustic Galactic. That's, a, that's an amazing way, Aileen. Rustic Galactic. What I mean, what else could live up to that sort of hype? 
What is this? I don't know. That's why we're opening it. I got a few, you know, I got a couple more packages. I got one from, uh, oh, this is a, what is this? Are you a mod? I got a package, like I said, uh, from Kent in there as well. And it's a tube, which leads me to believe that he printed something on it. Oh, where'd my trash bag go? Yeah. <laughs> which means I'm going to have a giant poster of something. It's going to be Dwayne, or it's going to be Kent, or it's going to be Dwayne and Kent, or it's going to be like a, a large meme or something. Serious Mods Vega RDA? Serious Mods Vega RDA. Oh. Oh, dang. Look at you, little flavor banger. Look at you. Just a tiny little flavor banger. It's got V-shaped airflow, like uh, arrows. The airflow is arrows. That's just a tiny, tiny little flavor banger. Tiny, tiny little flavor banger. Dang. All right, cool. What is this? The Vega. Uh, it comes with a black barrel as well as a stainless barrel. So then I'm assuming you can kind of, uh, you know, swap them out, get matchy matchy. Comes with different drip tips. It comes with a lot of extra spare parts. This is something that you can... I'm assuming, like, really uh, fiddle with the deck. Because it comes with extra deck parts. I said deck. Uh, uh, I don't get it. It has a different airflow? It has two different airflow options on the inside, but to change the airflow, you got to change the deck. That's interesting. Okay. Well, look, you know what? I'm, I'm skeptical, but optimistic as I am with most things. And, uh, I won't know until I know. And, uh, if there's one lesson I've learned from vlogging, it's that you don't build something you've never built before live on YouTube. Just don't do it. It's a bad idea. <laughs> You'll just spend 20, 30 minutes going, wow, looks right to me. I don't know why I can't get this to fire. I don't know why this isn't working. It looks right. I have, I, oh, I cut the leads too short. Oh, you guys, I cut the leads too short. My first YouTube. Just kidding. Is that joke getting old yet? Anthony. Oh, this is definitely, uh, this is definitely a yo yo package. What did you send me? What did you send me? Anthony. Yo, yo, Nick. First, I want to thank you again for what you continue to do for vaping advocacy. As for the enclosed gift, I hope that you don't already have one, but I couldn't resist sending this to you because if a stormtrooper vaped a mod, this is what, yep, uh, this is this mod kit would have to be the one. FYI, beware of the O-ring. My tank linked from a bad one. May Casey have a wonderful, blessed Christmas. Happy New Year, Anthony. Oh, Italian hillbilly. Okay, that's, see, that's the thing. <coughs> I know my patrons and my cool kids club by their like Instagram names. I don't know like their real, real names. The only real, real name I thought, let's see, Thomas Crow, Dan Mansfield. That's it. Those, that's the two. That's everybody else. And yeah, fuck yeah. This is exactly what a stormtrooper would vape. This is the Watofo Flux. This is the Watofo Flux kit. That I don't no, if I ever, shit, I don't know if I ever reviewed the Watofo Flux, but that, I mean, a hundred percent, you can't tell me that doesn't look like what a stormtrooper would vape. It looks like, this looks like it could be clipped to a stormtrooper's belt and like, it's, it's like a scanner. What is it? I don't know. It's a communicator. Red two, red two, standing by. No, that's what rebels say. Awesome, bro. Thank you. I love a stormtrooper mod. I love a I love a good stormtrooper looking mod. You appreciate that. Appreciate that vaping hillbilly, Italian hillbilly, you Italian hillbilly, you. Just it's a teespring. 
This came from Teespring, which is, again, leads me to believe that this could be some sort of gift and not necessarily a vaping-related mail item. Or are they just... I don't know. I don't know why I bother speculating. Like, I'm going to know as soon as I open it. What you open? Ah. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's hilarious. Who did this come from? I don't know who this came from. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who this came from. Uh could have been Dwayne, could have been uh, any multitude of people in the Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club, possibly someone from the Grim Army group on Facebook. Uh, I don't poop naked. <laughs> this has got to be one of the longest running jokes, like of all time, of all time. And it just comes from Dwayne walking in on me while I was pooping, and I wasn't even naked. I had a shirt on, but he kept making fun of me. Go oh, poop naked. Yeah, poop naked, great. That's hilarious. Uh, well, thank you for the mug, whoever you are. Uh, give me your name at some point and I will give you proper credit for the I poop naked coffee mug. But uh, look, I, I, have a, I have a thing for mugs. I like mugs and I like collecting mugs. And so having that actually is a good gift and I actually really love it despite the fact that I, I, I'll, I don't know. I'll never be able to escape that because of Dwayne. Because of thank you, Dwayne. Freaking Dwayne. <laughs> the mug says otherwise. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Delirium, for pointing that out. Is this going to be one of those things where I use this cup so often that eventually I'm like, okay, I do poop naked now. Yeah, that's me. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about pooping naked now. It's just what I do. DHL. It's going to be like the vaping epidemic, you know? It's just it, because you kept saying epidemic over and over and over again. Epidemic, 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 epidemic. People just, oh, started believing it. It's an epidemic. You don't need to prove it. You just need to say it a bunch. Uh, this looks like a pod system. Oh, no. This is, okay, this is awesome. This is something I have been waiting for. So I, I've recently uh, re-fallen in love with the Cali Burn. Uh, the Cali Burn and the Coco, but really it's the Cali Burn pods. I can't get over how much I love the Cali Burn pods. I just love the crap out of them. So JMate makes a Cali Burn PCC. Yep, there's a little USB cable. Yep, you can plug your Caliburn right onto there. Where's my Caliburn battery? Oh, does it go battery side out? Oh, that's a weird way to do it. Yep. Oh, snap. That is freaking geniusness. Okay, well then, then you have to use the case. Okay, so it's kind of cool. Okay, shit. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. I dropped it. Okay, so I just discovered a couple things about this JMate Caliburn uh, PCC. Opens it, battery right here. That's where your battery goes. Next to it is the internal battery of the charging case, right? That's the internal battery of the charging case, and then you have a charging thing right there. But I'm not going to be able to show you this. There's a tiny... And I've seen these for iPhones. You see these all over the place. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little micro USB that you plug into the bottom of your Caliburn battery, right? Boop. You plug it on there, and it makes your Caliburn battery not a USB anymore. It makes it the three golden contact dots, right? Golden contact dots. And then with this, you don't have to push your micro USB, you just set it in there and it does the little connection. It'll connect right away. See, it's charging right there. 
and then it, I mean, it fell out, but you just set it in there. Hmm, I feel like that lid should be magnetic. The lid's not magnetic. And this doesn't really, so if you dropped this, it would just be a yard sale. This would open and your battery would definitely come flying out. But my point is, there's just three little contacts here, three little contacts on here now because of the little adapter and it'll charge. You can just set it in there and it'll start charging your Caliburn. You can put a pod on there too and it'll charge your Caliburn with a pod on it. That's great, man. This is like, that's awesome. That's rad charges it i mean you still would probably need to carry maybe a little bottle of liquid to top off your pod but j mate boom it's called the p4 personal what is it called portable charging case i'm gonna do i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna do like a quick instagrammy video for this like an igtv video because i got three that need to that need homes they need to be given away i can give these away on instagram because it's literally just batteries there's nothing vaping related here so i can give those away and now i've got a little personal charging case for my cali burn that's awesome that's awesome all right j mate i think that's very very cool j mate I appreciate that. I like it. I mean, I don't like it as much as, say, a mug that says, I poop naked on it. But I do love it quite a bit. I just like, I just like this. I like the ceremony of this. I wish it was a quicker way to open it. I don't know. You'll get used to holding it. You can, oh, that's just kind of a cool little motion to make. Like, hold it like this, pop it open, boom throw it into your hand like if I was cool I could do it much better you know and look cool while I'm doing it should I give it another try another attempt at looking cool I really want to accomplish this open hand nope let me practice the the J mate charging case Cali burn like cool guy move and then I'll get back to you next week I'm gonna do it so flawlessly you'll just you'll be just fuck you just be like what how that was awesome sorry i just the cali burn is kind of amazing so i got i got three more packages here how are we doing on time okay we're doing pretty good on time we're doing pretty good on time i just want to make sure we leave enough time for news we i just want to make sure we need leave enough time for news i still have a liquid tasting to do as well so let's do let's do mail, let's do the news, let's do the liquid tasting, and then uh, and then we'll see where we end up there. This is a box from uh, from Amazon. Oh, Matt Sinister. This is a Christmas gift from one of my Yo Yo A Cool Kids Club, Matt Sinister. You know, Matt Sinister was a wrestler, amateur wrestler, like legit wrestling a gift for you why don't you get me a gift you don't have to get me a gift you didn't have to get me a gift but this is really cool oh my god if these are socks i'm gonna lose my mind awesome amazing holy shit holy shit look at that pickle Pickle, you got to come see these socks. <laughs> Die Hard Socks. Socks. I love everything about this, Matt Sinister. I freaking love everything about this. That's amazing. Pickle! You got to come look at these socks. That's crazy, Those right? Those are amazing. Matt Sinister. Matt Sinister. yippee ki yay motherfucker. Yeah, that's what it says on the back. Those Die Hard incredible. Socks. Matt Sinister, thank you. Also, beer me. Matt Sinister, thank you for the socks. It's pretty good. This Modern Times is pretty good. Here, I'm going to... Like that's so. how you good? Yeah. You go with that mostly I'll head? I'll do the head like a man. Yeah, just do it. Die Hard Socks. Die Hard Socks. Ta! Fuck yeah. All right. Thank you, Matt Sinister. Thank you, Matt Sinister. And on the other side, they say, uh, yippee ki motherfucker. 
except, you know, it's censored. Everybody knows what this word is. Everybody knows what this word is. There's no need in censoring it. You crazy people. Censor it. Everybody knows what it is. All right. You know what? I am a... Uh... Oi. This is another big one, too. Oh, this is merch. Okay, so I'm not going to get everything out of this. Ask them not to send me this much crap, too. All right. This. Huh. So this is... Uh, this is a, an apparel company. Apparel. Omix. Omix? Omix. Omix. Uh, and they do uh, more or less merch. Like, uh, merch. Why? So much stuff. So many t-shirts. So, and a backpack. And a hat. Well, if there's a hat, I have to put it on. This is just so much merch. All right. All right. Oh, crap. So here's an exhibit, an example, I guess, of their t-shirts. Uh, no, I am not. What does this say? No, I am not a fog machine for parties. That's a design of their shirt. What does it say on the back? More. More than vape. Some of their other designs are honestly uh, way cooler. I really like this one. More than vape. It's got like a collage there, some like, you know, boxes and uh, mods and stuff like that. This design is honestly pretty cool too. It's just their uh, logo, kind of, you know, those O's. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. This company just hit me up and they, they're like, hey, we sell uh, vape merch, vape lifestyle. Vape lifestyle merch. So there you go. I'm going to be, uh, I don't know, I guess wearing some fucking t shirts, right? Omix, vape lifestyle brand. Uh, there's just not a lot of those. There used to be. There's just not a lot of those anymore. Let's see what the propaganda literature has to say. Um, Nick, first of all, thank you for letting you send you this merch. Awesome products uh, we created for this awesome community. As a vape advocate since 2014, I wanted to become a voice to represent this huge family and make people feel identified with a brand that cares about them and their rights. Our main goal is to spread the word about vaping benefits through our designs and provide the necessary gear to carry your essentials with you everywhere. You'll love the tech backpack and the mailbag for real. Uh, I know this year wasn't the best for our community, but we will still be fighting against everything and everyone to prove that vaping is the future and still doing uh, and still doing what you do because I really think you are an important piece of the vaping industry. Keep hustling. Uh, well, thank you. That's very cool. Uh, Omix. O-H-M-I-U-X. Omix. Omix. So awesome. So, you know, I got some t-shirts, you know. I got some t-shirts. I got a hoodie. I got a backpack. Uh, if anybody's interested in, like, the functionality of this backpack, maybe I'll throw something up on, like, Instagram or YouTube or something. I don't know. They make it. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. This could become, like, a travel backpack. This could become, like, a travel vac backpack, especially if it's geared towards, like, hey, vapors, and look, you can put you know, 18650s and their cases in here and put liquid in here and there's a freaking USB on it as well. Anyway, all right, om Omix. This hat is terribly uncomfortable and I don't generally rock hats with a camo bill. I'm going to put my comfortable hat back on just for right now. Just for, just for right now. There we go. You know, it's like... When your own hat just fits your head perfectly, and only hat guys are going to understand this, but when you have a hat and it's your hat and you wear your hat day in and day out and you just are hats, it's, it just becomes a part of your head. You put it on and you're like, oh, that's just, that's like I'm putting on the rest of my body. It just, it just fits and it's just perfect. That's it. Hat. Hats. All right, we got, a, we got one from here from Kent here as well. This is the last mail, and it's from Kent Hill. 
and I can't imagine I can't imagine what's inside this package. Cross your fingers it's something good and not something weird or creepy. All right. It's definitely something large and printed. Oh man. All right. Oh, that's actually amazing. Holy crap, Kent. I love the crap out of this. How do you not love this? How do you not love this? That's incredible. Baby Yoda's eating a dead job of the hut. I I have no words. I have no words. This is the coolest was well, this is the coolest thing I've ever owned. Everything else I own sucks compared to this. Literally everything else. I'm just kidding. But I love this. I'm going to frame it. It's going to end up back here somewhere. Because that's too cool to not go on a wall. Baby Yoda's eating a hut. I don't know if that's Jabba, but it kind of looks like Jabba. I don't know my huts very well. I don't actually know of any other huts names. This is the way. This is the way. I love this, Kent. Fucking love you, bro. Thank you. That's an amazing gift. That's an amazing gift. And I love that. And you know what I you know what I love about this gift even more is that Kent doesn't even watch Star Wars. He's like he's not a Star Wars fan or anything, but he knows that I am and he saw that and went, "Shit, that's cool. I think Nick would like that even though I don't like Star Wars." And he got it as a gift. That's amazing, Kent. Thank you, bro. I love you. And I'm going to get that framed 8,000%. 8,000% getting this frame. This is going in here somewhere. Odorous might have to come down. Mastodon might have to come down. I don't know. It's going in here somewhere. That's 100% sure. Holy crap. That's 200% sure. Let me just grab my J-Mate. Caliburn did it. Back in the case. Done vaping. Fuck, that's cool. Damn, that is cool. Damn, that is cool. Damn, that is cool. Oh, yes. Good call, Ruby. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're going to do the super chats, you know, because I always forget in between segments. So before we get to the news and advocacy, we're going to do some super chats. So let's do some super chattings. Some super chattings. Uh, I don't remember where we left off. Uh, let's see. There was Barbara. Kevin was getting married in September to the love of his life. That's right. Uh, New Grimm, Eifer, Nick, Michelle Lynn. That's right. Poon Sauce is here. This isn't where I left my car. Okay, well, okay, thanks. Bye. Don't leave, Poon Sauce. Hang out more. Come stay. Stay and be part of this. Stay and be part of this family. I Thank you, Poon Sauce. Very gracious of you. Uh, the Vapen Homo Sapien. That's very clever. Oh, that's very clever for you. Very gracious of you. Rick and Morty, more like Nick and Chorky. <laughs> no. <laughs> we can never use the term Chorky ever again. We just can't. No more Chork, you guys. <laughs> no more being Chorky. <laughs> Oh, Brandon Cox, very gracious of you. I can't do root beer as an all-day vape. You know, I, that's it's that's fine. I don't judge you or anything. Um, a lot of I can't do a lot of things for an all-day vape, but you know that's why that's why everybody has their own. That's why everybody has their own all-day vape. Um, one of uh, and I only bring this up because it's such an interesting flavor to me is um, Dino, who was one of the co-creators, I believe, of the Velocity. Maybe he wasn't a creator of it, but he had something to do with the velocity and he did the marquee RDA way back in the day. He, he vapes, he has vaped one flavor for like a decade now and it's just a creme de menthe flavor and he just buys it and that's what he vapes and he vapes one flavor. Casey, Casey Pickle, my wife, is the same way. She buys uh, Lane Cove Alice and then that's what she vapes and that's all she vapes is one flavor of liquid. I couldn't do a creme de menthe all day. I couldn't do Alice all day. I can do root beer all day long, but I get it that other people can't. And so that's fine. If you can't do root beer, 
then I mean, I, I definitely do think less of you, <laughs> but I won't hold it against you, at least in a public capacity. You know, if I see you in real life, Brandon, I'll still be cool to you. But in my head, I'm going to be like that fucker can't do root beer all day. Unreal. Unreal. No, of course not. I, for very gracious of you, in my best fellow kids impression, I too am enjoying some shed time, as the kids say. <laughs> Greetings, fellow youths. Uh, where to find Boule Bolu? Yeah, coilturd.com, I believe, is the only place to get it. Coilturd.com, and you got to get it. He doesn't have it in stock very often. Uh, what kind of turntable do you use to play your vinyl? That's a good question, Chomp. Definitely look into the Technics MK2 with what with sure needles my 20 year favorite so we don't have an audiophile level of of record player of turntable the turntable that we have uh i got for casey pickle uh for christmas last year uh, was it last year i don't remember what year this was it must have been last year but it's one of those vertical turntables so it's just a you know it's a square box with speakers but the turntable itself is is a vertical you can see it in my instagram story i have a story that's uh, called rock tunes and that's the vertical record player it's great it sounds great we hooked it have haven't hooked up through an amplifier and going through proper speakers and everything it sounds awesome but uh with the uh with the with the level of records i plan on buying and have already purchased in my life a good turntable is uh is worth its weight in gold uh, you should put out a podcast for shed time. No, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Chris D very gracious of you. Hey, Grim, have you, ha uh, hope you had a great new year. Also ordered a Grim kit from you a few days ago and can't wait to get it. Taking the family, sh uh, shopping quick. So see you on the replay right on Chris D right on. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I'll catch you on the replay. Tim J, very gracious of you. I signed up on Patreon and DM'd you. Finances have improved so I can be a cool kid again. Look, Tim J, you were always a cool kid, regardless of whether or not you were a paying cool kid. You're always a cool kid, Tim J. Uh, like our win today, we need, it, uh, we need to stay on this and not let the guard down. Damn right, we're gonna be talking about that. Happy New Year, thanks for all you do. Well, welcome back, Tim J, and you are absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, Frank, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Nick, just uh, just turned in better late than never. Now, that's fine. Better late than never. Even, even never is okay sometimes. Never's fine. Some people say better late than never, like never's a bad thing, but never kinda can be a good thing too, right? I mean, am I right? I think I'm right. Mary Bowers, very gracious of you. Message retracted, but I still appreciate it. Steve, very gracious of you. Is it too cold to poop naked? Oh, it's too cold to poop naked realistically, though, unless you live in Cali like Nick. Here's the thing. it's California is not always like this tropical wonderland of just sunshine and beaches and 70 degrees year round. It, that's just not the it. It was 35 degrees the other day, I'll have you know, and it gets cold at night. It gets legitimately cold and chilly, like cold. Our pool was 50 degrees, five zero. That's cold. And Casey jumped in it, which makes her crazy. And it's cold and it just gets cold. So yes, it does get too cold to naked poop in Southern California as well, which is one of the reasons I don't really... Uh, which is one of the reasons I don't really naked poop. Um, uh, shoot, I lost my place, you guys. That happens. See you on the replay. Uh, there we go, Mary. There we go. One more Mary with a poop. Appreciate that, Mary Bowers. Uh, just a little poop there. Appreciate that little poop. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Where am I going to leave off? Okay, let's leave off with Mary. Uh, no, let's just get through these. Let's just keep going. I'm having fun. Let's just keep going. Mary Bowers, thank you for the poop emoji. Uh, looks too much like a cigarette case. No, that doesn't look like a cigarette case. Does it look like a cigarette case? You well, J well, J Max. What is this? J mate, J mate. I kind of wish, I kind of wish it was easier to open. And I wish it like open. It's a such a good idea. But there could be so much done to this to make it so much cooler. So much cooler. The way it opens, the way you get your device out. 
Could be so much cooler, but it's still very cool. Dustin, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, to you, Grim. Have you ever thought about checking out the Typhon G4? Kind of been my favorite tank for the past few years. Uh, you'll you'll see it a lot at Hall of Ape in Stuttgart this year. Uh, love from Germany. Can't wait. I'm going to Germany this year. I will do whatever I have to get do to get there. I will get to Germany this year. And if I go, I'm going to count all the Typhon G4s that are there. Every single one, Dustin. Every single one. I've never actually tried that RTA. Bartek, Bartex X8. Uh, very gracious of you. Just a little dancing Burt. Very gracious of you. Uh, Eifer. Yeah. You feel me on the hat thing? It's just one of those things. You have your hat that you've been wearing. And for me, it's just been my Queen City Vapes hat. You know, and it's just a really comfy hat. And it's just psh, right now, pow, fits my head perfect. 100%. Uh, Anthony, very gracious of you. Nick, you don't need the Chinese when you have your friend. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Italian Hillbilly. I really appreciate that. One more from Mary. No uh, no poop emoji this time. That's fine. Matt Sinister, you're welcome. And welcome to the party, pal. Yeah. Matt Sinister, awesome. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the party, pal. That's what it says on my website now. Uh, I finally got a Twitter. Vape Level Midnight got a Twitter. Uh, can you please let me know who I should be following for vape advocacy and news? Keep being who you are because you rock. Oh, well, thank you very much, Vape Level Midnight. Awesome name, by the way. Awesome name, Vape Level Midnight. Um, I don't have a list off the top of my head, but if you go back to this week's Tuesday Bro Tuesday, in the description of that video is a whole bunch of Twitters that you should be following and a whole bunch of Twitters that you should be tweeting at we vape, we vote. Big list of them. Follow, tweet at, boom. There, that's your that's your Twitter starter kit. I put that together just for you, Vape Level Midnight. It's yesterday on Tuesday, bro. Tuesday. Just kidding. Uh, Prohibition syntax peanut butter custard is my jam. Oh, really, Brandon? All right. I have some of that syntax. Uh, I've been I've been really really impressed with all the Prohibition stuff I've had so far. Every Prohibition liquid I've had so far has been just rock and roll. I'll, I'll go dig some of that out. Uh, Chinese Jimmy, fist bump. There you go, bud. Appreciate that. Me and my wife are five-year SIG-free capers. Thanks for all your help, you rock bow. And yes, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely, Muskrat GT. That's very gracious of you. Congratulations. Uh, did my shed time suggestion say podcast? I thought I typed product. Sorry, Nick. Shed time. <laughs> oh, I see. You don't want me to do a shed time podcast. You want me to do a shed time product. Okay. Well, that might be a, even more difficult of a thing to do. Matching carpet. Where can I get some day blazer beer? Uh, I don't know if it's for sale right now. I think it's a seasonal. Isn't that a seasonal? I think it's a seasonal. New Belgium's day blazer. I think that's a seasonal. We might have to uh, talk to our resident beer uh, expert, Ruby Roo. But I think she'll, she's going to tell you the same thing. Uh, oddball two cats, Leviathan sea salt pineapple in RPM 40 all day, every day. Grumpy granny and, and my damn cat. Grumpy granny and my damn cat. <laughs> I love that. Grumpy granny and my damn cat. Well, you enjoy that Leviathan sea salt pineapple. That sounds awesome. That's the same thing. Like I could not even entertain the idea of doing a pineapple liquid all day like all day every day pineapple look i like pineapple but <whistles> all day every day i could not do root beer on the other hand i could all day every day uh last super chat before we get to the news and advocacy steve have you ever tried the mutation v5 rda um Hang on, let me Google. Uh, looks like I have not tried that. I don't think I ever tried the mutation, uh, pardon me, burp life. I don't think I've ever tried the mutation V5. Don't think I ever got to, got to that. Looks like it came out in 2016-ish. Uh, Never got to try it. I never got to try it. Well, was it any good? I mean, was it? You didn't let me know, Steve. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, didn't get to try that, Steve. So yeah, we're all cut up on the super chats right now. So I, I guess it's time to talk about the, uh, I guess it's time to talk about the, uh, 
How many more times can I retreat, repeat myself? I guess it's time to talk about the, the flavor ban, not flavor ban that happened. So let's just jump straight into some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. So man, just a bunch of things happened. Uh, it all started off for me, uh, at least on Twitter with Paul Blair. And he had tweeted out that uh, a flavor ban was coming for cartridges only, cartridges and pods, and that open they the terminology is kind of all over the place and that's the weirdest part of this whole thing is they need some subject matter experts in on this they they really need some some subject matter experts in on this because they just can't get the damn terminology right they call things different things the cdc was calling things that you vape thc out of e-cigarettes for like two months and nobody who vapes THC out of a cartridge calls it an e-cigarette. Not one. I challenge you to find one. And so the, the terminology that they're using is just off. It's just weird. And so they say things like cartridge or pod based flavored e-cigarettes will be subject to the flavor ban. And then they say open vapor or tank they call, I've seen people call it tank style, open vapor or open tank style. Like, like the, it's not a tank. They, their terminology is just, their terminology is part of the problem. Their terminology is what is making things so confusing. It was here. Why not vape it? So basically what this means and I'll talk about my feelings after on it after I talk about what it means. So basically what it means is retailers have 30 days uh, to pull all of their flavored e-cigarette cartridge based e-cigs off the market and or pods off the market. So closed they, they closed system cartridges or pods. So basically like Juul, right? Thankfully, Jewel already banned themselves, so they don't have anything to do. Because whatever, Jewel, losers. Everybody at Jewel is a bunch of losers. That's what I have to say about Jewel. Bunch of losers over there at Jewel. So things like Jewel, all of the Enjoy products are going to get pulled off the market. Which, honestly, that is the that is I feel the worst for Enjoy. I feel legitimately the worst for Enjoy because Enjoy they went to bat for all of vaping. They went to bat for all of flavors in that White House meeting and they have done they have a track record of doing that and they are the company Enjoy that is probably going to get screwed the most out of this. And that is just the worst cuz they're a great great company, but they are going to get the most screwed out of this. The person that's not going to get the most screwed out of this, the biggest winner of this whole situation is Jewel. <laughs> the whole, the biggest winner of this whole situation is Jewel. Jewel just had all of their competition taken off the market, essentially. All of their competition taken off the market. All this does is th the one good thing that it does that it's not, it, it's not a win, it's just a temporary win. It's just a temporary win is that what they call open vapor, open tank, anything like this or this or uh, 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 sure, maybe this, maybe this. Although is this a pod? They didn't specify anything else other than using the terminology cartridge or pod. Too long didn't read. If the system comes pre-filled with e-liquid, it can no longer come in any flavors other than tobacco or menthol as of the 30 days from now, unless it's a disposable and that is exempt. That's the weirdest part to me. That is the single weirdest part to me. And Scott Gottlieb raised this question on Twitter as well. Disposables, so things like the Puff Bar and the Stig and the Mojo, even though they do come in a variety of flavors they not only do they come in a variety of flavors but they come in 50 milligram nicotine as well those are exempt from this those can stay on the market until may 2020 
But every everything else that has a cartridge that's removable has to be off the market if they come pre-filled. So a good example is the yearn, the UL yearn. So if the UL yearn wants to stay on the market, they can only sell tobacco and menthol pre-filled pods. But they also sell empty pods that you can fill up with whatever you want. And so that's a, that's a, that's like a, that's like a, a product segment that is completely getting like, we're either pretending it doesn't exist. Do they really not know that these exist? They're just kind of in limbo. It's like, okay, well, whatever. Like there's going to be people who go from a jewel to like a Cali burn because they can go get 50 milligram salt nick from a vape shop and fill up their Cali burn and vape the exact same way and vape the exact same way. It just, this has created more questions than really it it answers. Um, and again, like open pods, all paused, closed pods. Uh, Danielle Jones clarified for us, only pre-filled pods. And this is something that Ruby and I were talking about on the podcast as well. Why the differentiation between menthol and mint? Why does that exist? They talk about the youths Oh, the youths, their favorite, their their preferred way to vape, their preferred flavor is mint. So we have to ban mint. Well, what about menthol? No, you can leave menthol. What? What? Are menthol and mint so drastically different that the discerning palate of the high school student would take a drag of menthol and be like, no, well, I wouldn't vape that. It's not mint. Are they that drastically different? <laughs> no, no, but I guess kind of, I guess kind of to, to the government or to the FDA. I can't, I mean, they can't, they can't possibly be this ignorant. They know what these products are. Scott Gottlieb knows what these products are. In fact, let me get over to, where's my Scott Gottlieb tweet? Where is my Scott Gottlieb freaking tweet? Yeah, Scott Gottlieb thread. The guidance issued today defines cartridge-based ends, and this is a this is a term that we're all gonna have to do. We're all gonna have to learn ends. I've been trying. I've been avoiding using this term because it's so dumb. Ends. E N D S is basically anything vape product, anything, uh, any vapor product, any finished vapor product. I should say right. Ends. The guidance issued today defines cartridge-based ENDS products as a cartridge or pod that holds liquid that is to be aerosolized through product use. But where does that leave puff bars? Right? Puff bars are, they don't have removable cartridges that you put in and out. They're disposables. It's like the Stig. I wish I had, I had a, a puff bar clone here for a while that I was using, but they're just, they're, disposables you know it's like the stig those are exempt footnote 20 states that an example of e-cigs that wouldn't be captured by this definition include completely self-contained disposable products that could be read as exempting puff bars and similarly similar products like sigalikes and i think they're just going to run into more problems with this they're just going to run into more problems with this. Either the youths are going to go from their mint jewels to menthol jewels or to tobacco jewels, proving that, again, as the 2019 National Youth Tobacco Survey data shows, that this really isn't about flavors. It is about nicotine. Flavors came in a distant, distant third in reasons given why youths have started taking up vaping. They're either going to go to the tobacco they're going to go to menthol or they're just going to switch products completely and we're going to have to go through this whole fucking song and dance over again and suddenly it's not going to be jewel anymore it's going to be puff bars or it's going to be stigs or it's going to be ice bars or it's going to be any one of the other multitude of disposable high nicotine flavored self-contained e-cigs in there 
And the reason that it's going to happen is because the FDA didn't care to learn enough about the technology that they're about to regulate. So they leave like these gaping loopholes in there and they're doing it to themselves. And I mean, I don't know why Scott Gottlieb's calling, calling the FDA out now when he had the opportunity to regulate these back in 2017. He could have done that before all of this was an issue, before Puff Bar was even on the market, Scott Gottlieb. You could have fixed all of this. Could have fixed all of this. But instead, what the government does and what the government has the tendency to do is just make everything worse. That's what they do. They have a problem, government comes in, makes it worse. We've got this great product, getting millions of people off of traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. What does the government come in and do? Fucking makes it worse. Let's take some government, let's take something good and fucking ruin it, ruined it. And Scott, you're not, Scott is not above this. He could have fixed this. It, or he could have at least taken steps, the first steps to fix this instead of focusing on low nicotine cigarettes, which yay, now we have low nicotine cigarettes. That, is that going to be your legacy, Scott Gottlieb? Oh, I went to the FDA and did nothing <laughs> except suggest low nicotine cigarettes. Under my watch, I allowed an, a, a youth vaping epidemic to flourish and did nothing about it. And then I left the FDA and left it, left these problems to somebody else who also did nothing about it. It took Pave and Melania Trump to get the ball moving on any vape regulation. And I want that to eat Scott Gottlieb up at night. I want that he I want him to lay in bed thinking I could have done something. I could have done something in 2017. I could have initiated regulation. We could have really studied these products. We could have had subject matter experts in. We could have nipped this in the bud. We could have saved millions and millions of lives. We could have had all of these youths never initiate nicotine use with an e-cigarette. He could have had it all. He could have done it all. But instead he did nothing. And now that he's on the outside of it, which he still you know, he still works with the FDA. He still consults with the FDA. And now that he's on the outside of it, suddenly Scott has all the answers. Well, the, the issues today, guidance issued today doesn't cover this. What about that? He's calling out the FDA. Doesn't cover these. What about these? It's like, well, if you know about these, why didn't we do anything about these to begin with? Oh, makes me insane. It makes me insane. So hang on. So what was excluded today from the flavor ban is everything else basically, right? Everything else basically. You, you want to, you want to, here, you want to put, uh, you want to put root beer in an RTA? Boom. You can. You can now. Not banned. Not illegal. Unless you're in Massachusetts or in Washington state. Governor Inslee almost upsets me more than Charlie Baker over there in, in, in Massachusetts. Jay Inslee in Washington is the worst kind of human. He's the, he's the worst kind of human. <laughs> They're both the worst kind of humans considering they did, they did nicotine vape flavor bans before the CDC even announced like what the cause of all of this was. They're like, nope, we're gonna, of course, we're gonna have jump the gun and have this big knee jerk reaction and pass this sweeping legislation that's going to ruin people's lives and rip a loss harmful alternative away from smokers and you know fuck up all the tax dollars in our state. Just the worst, worst kind of people. So what's not affected? This, 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 this. This, everything that we have been vaping for years and years are not affected at all by this ban. Not affected at all. So vape up. Vape if you got them. Take your 100 mil bottles, fill up an RTA, and just vape your face off because these are exempt from a flavor ban. But really, what does that mean? <laughs> All that means is that we now have an extra five months of, of industry life before we really become eradicated. 
before we are truly wiped from the market because unless things have changed in the last 12 hours, PMTAs are still due in May. May 2020 is still the PMTA date, at which point won't matter. <laughs> won't matter if you have flavors or not. If you don't have a PMTA, you're gone off the market. That's when all of the vape shops will actually close. That's when all of this and this and this and this and this all, all get pulled from the market. They all get pulled from the market because of May 2020. So unless that PMTA deadline changes or the pathway becomes far less cumbersome or expensive to navigate, it still is D-Day for vaping. May 2020 is still, in spite of this news today, it's still the D-Day for vaping. And here's... Okay. This this announcement has just been rubbing me the wrong way and I couldn't I couldn't really place my finger on it. I couldn't figure out what was annoying me so much about this announcement when I feel like we should have been celebrating, we should have been stoked, we should have been like, well, that's shit, that's it. Like fucking we won. Vaping is here and we can sell vapes now in our vape shops and I can have my liquid and I can have my RTA and I can vape and why don't I feel like this is a win? I just, why don't I feel like this is a win? Part of why I don't feel like this is a win is like I already said, the PMTAs are coming up in May, 2020, which we're all gonna be fucked then anyway. I feel personally like this announcement was kind of created to maybe create some division within the vape community. And before you accuse me of having my tinfoil hat on, just hear me out. I think it's weird. This announcement came at a really, really weird time, right? Who was at the rally? Everybody with mods and tanks and RTAs were the majority of the people at the rally. There wasn't a lot of jewel users there, pod users there defending their rights. It was a lot of hobbyist vapors, I guess I would say. In the vape industry, we there's different, there's hobbyist vapors like us. If you're watching this live stream right now, chances are you're a hobbyist vapor or you were at some point. Hobbyist vaping and then the rest of the world. And the only people that were making a fuss over this flavor ban was the hobbyist vapors and anybody that we could recruit, literally anybody that we could recruit and the hobbyist vapors. We vape, we vote, that was us. And, and then the rest of the world, right? Then the rest of the vapors that don't, they're not, in, they're not part of the community, they're not part of the industry, they're not, they're not anything. They just, they, they bought a jewel one time or they have a, a pod they bought online and that's it and they, they're not in it, they're not part of it. This announcement felt like they were just telling us to shut up, you know? Which maybe they were. Maybe they were. Maybe like, we'll give you what you want, just shut up. Maybe we did make that big of an impact. And I think that they think that because of this announcement that we're gonna feel appeased and we're gonna back down. Less calls to the White House. I can't hear you back here. What, vaping? I don't know. It doesn't, we're vaping back here. Can't hear you. Maybe less calls to the White House will happen now. Maybe less emails to the ha White House will happen now. Maybe there's still going to be some vapors that are saying, no, we need to keep standing up for this. And there's going to be some vapors that are saying, why? We won. We got the things we want. All I wanted was my three milligram and my mod, and now I got that. Why am I continuing to fight? Feels like division, and I don't like it. Don't like it at all. I don't think we should be appeased by this. I don't think we should be satisfied by this. This is a five month stay of execution and there's no other way that I can see it. It's a five month stay of execution. We're still getting executed May, 2020. But we got this really weird announcement on January 1st saying that, oh no, open vapor is fine. 
will you guys shut up now and stop calling the White House? And I think our answer should be, of course not. No, this isn't good enough. A stay of execution isn't good enough. A five month stay of execution, I'm sorry. I don't feel like that's good enough. I genuinely don't. I, yeah, fight forever for vaping. It's not good enough. I think it's weird that they didn't address nicotine caps either. I think that's really, really weird. And that's another thing that the vaping community, the vaping industry is really uh, divided on is the nicotine cap. There's some people who are really, really for it. And there's a lot of people that are really, really against it. I'm personally someone, I fall into the, I think a, I think the nicotine cap would be a very beneficial thing. I think you could even go as high as like 25, 30 milligram of nicotine and, and we would still convert millions of smokers and it would probably actually help the youth vaping issue. It would probably actually help. It would probably actually help the youth vaping issue if the youths weren't constantly being bombarded with uh, vaping propaganda from our own federal government and our own state and local governments. <laughs> Curiosity was the number one reason given. Wonder why they're curious, right? Me and Ruby were talked about this on the podcast this week. I wonder why they were curious. Couldn't have been the government. Couldn't have been California Department of Public Health saying, hey, all your friends are doing this, so you shouldn't. Yes, Stan, Tenacious TX Vapes, I see that super chat. Keep calling them and tell them the PMTA process, process is unreasonable, completely unreasonable, unbelievably unreasonable. We have held no other product to this, this level of scrutiny. Alcohol is allowed on the market and that will straight up kill your ass if you drink too much of it. Cigarettes are allowed on the market. And those will straight up kill your ass if you keep using them. But for some reason, we just can't allow vapes on the market until they prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're a net benefit to public health, even to the most critical audience. Everybody has to agree. Why? What on earth for? Did we do this to alcohol? No, of course not. The market wants what the market wants. No matter how much the government tries to interfere with it, the market wants what the market wants. I mean, the prohibition in the 1920s was a perfect example of this. We wanted booze. The market wanted booze. So the market got booze any way that it could. The market wants what the market wants. And that's just, there's no way around it. And all the government does is try to get in the way of it. So we have five months. We basically have a five month stay of execution. We, we can keep all our flavors in all of our vape shops. We can, we can keep all of our flavors in all of our vape shops and we can continue to sell hardware in, in all of our vape shops. And disposables are not included. They're completely exempt from this flavor ban ruling and the PMTAs are still coming in May of 2020. That's five. That didn't make any sense what I did just there, but it felt pretty cool. PMTAs are still coming in May 2020. And what? who's going to afford a PMTA? Jewel. Jewel is the real winner of all of this, which is just frustrating as hell. And what is that? I mean, what's this going to do to youth vaping? What is it? Can we speculate what this is going to do to youth vaping? I mean, youths are either going to follow, you know, fall in line and go, oh, this menthol, it's not like my mint. I'm not going to vape it anymore. Or they're going to go to tobacco and we'll see youth vaping continue whatever it's been going on because it's, it's obviously about nicotine and not about flavors. Or going to go back to cigarettes? You think they'd go back to cigarettes? I mean, if, if youths are going to rebel with the safer alternative, with the less harmful option, what happens when you take the less harmful option away from them? What are they going to rebel to? Because if you think kids aren't going to rebel, you're out of your mind. Of course they are. Where are they going to rebel to? I don't know. 
but we get to keep our flavors. We get to keep our flavors for five more months. So no one should be breathing a sigh of relief right now. No one should be like, we won, you guys. We won, we did it. We didn't do it. We're coming close and we need to be relentless. And like Paul Blair said at the beginning of this, I, I love that tweet so much. I just love the shit out of that tweet. Should I show it again? Where'd it go? No, nope, that's not it. There it is. Vapors won the vape war. They are fighters. They never gave up. They refused to cave. I refuse to cave. Oh, now we're now it's just dark. All right. I refuse to holy shit. How did you know what show you're watching? Oh, the logo's broken. That's why. Oh, that's so stupid. Now you don't know that this is the vlog. There has to be a better way. Yeah. Brian perfectly legitimate option. Kids are going to go to THC carts. Vaping rates drop. Smoking rates drop. Now we have just high as fuck kids just stoned out of their mind all the time. And you know why? It's because it's not federally regulated yet. This is the problem. It's not federally regulated yet. As far as the federal government's concerned, it's still just as bad as heroin. Schedule one narcotic, that's crazy to me that it's legal in California, but the federal government thinks it's a schedule one narcotic. I think that kids are gonna smoke. I think the kids are gonna smoke. It's gonna go back to the good old days, smoking in the boys' room. Actually, I think the kids are gonna to continue to vape. I think youths are just gonna to switch to menthol. I think youths are gonna to switch to tobacco flavored whatever, jewels. We're probably going to see, if I had to put a hard, hard prediction on this, we're probably going to see youth vaping drop slightly in the most slightest little way possible, but it's only gonna be very slightly because they're just gonna go straight to tobacco jewels or they're just gonna go straight to carts, like THC carts, straight to uh, THC carts. straight to THC carts. Hopefully we got all of the Evoli cases uh, sorted out by then. Um, one thing that I wanted to put here, I'm gonna put this in the uh, chat right now. I'm gonna put it in the description to this video. Leafly just released an amazing article today, an amazing article that is very, very critical, very critical of uh, the CDC and how they ignored all of this evidence and how they really, I mean, on Tuesday, bro, Tuesday, not too long ago, I read that article from Guy Bentley in Reason Magazine, talk, you know, really calling out the CDC, telling them they blundered, you know, like this was a blunder. How did, how did they even manage to blunder it this badly? The CDC is not to be trusted. CDC is not to be trusted. Public health orgs, all the body part orgs, not to be trusted. Kids need a vice. Every kid has a vice. I had a vice. I was smoking cigarettes like crazy. Smoking cigarettes like crazy, man. So that's where that's where this leaves off. It's just a weird rule. I'm gonna have links in the description. Uh, I I my wife Casey subscribed to the Wall Street Journal so that I could read this entire article. Um, but there's the Wall Street Journal link. I'll also have that in the description. I'm going to put some other links in the description here as well from uh, one from Mike Siegel. I love Mike Siegel, Boston School of Public Health. Uh, he has a post on his tobacco analyst uh, blog spot uh, talking about uh, this this very this very topic one dollar one bullet dodged now we have to dodge another one uh, of course he's talking about the PMTA I'll have all sorts of links down in the description and overall like I said just seems real weird doesn't make any sense it's literally a stay of execution for five months until May 2020 and that's really all this is I don't see a real reason to celebrate uh, this is not a tobacco harm reduction win in any capacity making the most successful, you know, smoking cessation product on the market less appealing to the smokers that need it is not a win for public health. This is a loss for public health. This is a loss for tobacco harm reduction, but it's a win, you know, in some ways, it's a win that now these vape shop owners can maybe breathe a slight sigh of relief 
and not have to worry about if they're going to have to close within the next month. Now they can worry about if they're going to have to close in five months because when the PMTA comes, not sure if I mentioned this, industry decimated. That's what happens when the PMTA goes through. May 2020. And it's been a lot of dates, you know, throughout the years. But now we're here. May 2020 is now the final D-Day. So don't celebrate this as a win. Celebrate this as a we're being really, really effective and they want us to shut up. That's all I see this as. And you know what we're going to say back? No, I'm not going to shut up, bro. We're going to keep calling the White House. We're going to keep calling the White House and tell them. What did Stan Tenacious TX Vape say? What did you say, Stan? PMTAs, you're stupid. Or what did you say? I don't remember your exact wording, but it was something like that. Yeah, keep calling them and tell them the PMTA process is unreasonable. That's it. The PMTA process is unreasonable. Completely unreasonable. That's what we need to be calling the White House now. And we need to, you guys, this we vape, we vote thing, it's big and it was trending the other day and we need to keep using the we vape, we vote hashtag like crazy on Twitter because it's trending and it's really getting noticed. And obviously because of the announcement today, we're obviously making a difference. We're obviously getting in stuck in their craw and they want us to shut up and we're not gonna shut up. That's what I take this as, as a big shut up and I don't wanna shut up and I'm not gonna shut up and I don't think any of us should shut up. And what I want to encourage, if there's one thing, if there's one takeaway from all of this, if there's one takeaway from all of this, this is the one thing I want everybody everybody to take away from this, especially shop owners. We got to card everybody. We have to card everybody. Every customer you have, card them. Card them before they get in the door if you can, but card them. Even card them multiple times. Card them right before they talk to you before they even get to the counter, card them. Card them when they check out again. Maybe card them as they exit. Card. Card, 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 card. That is carding, vape shops, carding people is the only thing that is going to save us. Carding people and vape shops is the only thing that is going to save us because the last thing we need to see in some BuzzFeed article is some mom to vist or pave mother that has their kid who walked into a vape shop and bought a sub ohm tank and a bottle of 50 milligram salt nick and now they're sub ohming salt nicks instead of just getting it from a jewel. We cannot allow that to happen. We can, because if that happens, that's it. I mean, that would really be it. We would lose all of our flavors. We would lose everything. We would lose sub ohm tanks. That's too much vapor for the human lung to inhale. They would twist it in some weird way. You know, they'd call it like, uh, you know, aerosols or some sort of concoction that was mixed in the back with excessive amounts of nicotine. They would call the tanks like, you know, they, they would do the, they call them like ooh, hacked tanks. Oh, high powered batteries. You know, these batteries are the same batteries that power a Tesla car and they're using them in their hacked vape mods, vaping f excessive amounts of 50 milligram. I mean, can you see how the mainstream media would spin this into something that the world would hate? So just please, please card everybody that walks into your shop. I am begging you. It's going to be the only thing that saves us. Yeah, contraptions, these hacked contraptions. But I mean, you could see it, right? That's exactly what they would do. It would be overblown and sensationalized into the next millennium if some kid threw up or got sick because he was chain sub-tanking 50 milligram salt nicks. We cannot allow that to happen. We cannot allow that to happen. So I am begging you. I am begging every shop employee and owner to card everybody that even looks at the sign on the sidewalk. Stand outside your shop. Anybody that even looks at your shop, you're like, can I see some ID, pal? This is 21 and over to shop, to, brow to even look at my shop. I'm going to card you. Please, please card. Please, 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 
please, please card. I'm going to keep saying it. No way PMTA. Hashtag no way PMTA. I love that. I'm going to keep using that. I think you're using that. I'm going to use that. I'm definitely using that. No way PMTA. So awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do right now, let's just, we're going to wrap up the news and advocacy. We're going to wrap up this vlog here. I'm going to get to the rest of these super chats and then I'm going to end the vlog today with a very random liquid tasting of, uh, I am, I'm genuinely fearful for this liquid. I am scared of this liquid as to what it's going to taste like. I just find it terrifying. I find the name of it terrifying. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had to clear my text messages. I just can't. Notifications on my phone it just makes me insane. Mmm. All right. Oh, what's up, J Mate? What's up, Caliburn? Do you have a J Mate portable charging case for your Caliburn? Let's try that again. Not bad. Uh, all right. So let's start here with uh, where did we leave off? I uh, don't remember where we left off. Leviathan, Mutation, Happy New Year, Grim. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Josh. Very much appreciate that, Josh. Hey, dear. Uh, Zachariah, love the work. Share the message, not the mess. I like that. I like that. I like that. Chris, very gracious of you. They kept disposables so teen rates don't decline. Yeah, I mean, it kind of seems like it, right? Look, if you take away, it's like, it's like the government and I just keep using the California Department of Public Health because they're the biggest offenders of this. They're like, youths, all your friends are vaping jewels, so don't do it, right? And then it's like, youths, we're banning these jewels so that you stop doing it. What's it gonna take? 0.2 seconds for them to find a puff bar? <laughs> 0.2 seconds? I wouldn't be surprised if if the FDA... If the FDA and the California Department of Public Health was just like, hey, here's a, uh, check it out, puff bars. Avoid these too, you guys. <laughs> these are worse than jewels. Avoid these at all costs. Don't vape a puff bar. Would not shock me. Would not shock me. <sighs> no, gonna have to buy liquid in age-restricted shops. That cuts out those daring youth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, DIY is still okay. Very wet, very much okay, Kevin. Uh, vaping with Vic. Vaping with Vic. How are you, my man? Meanwhile, in the UK and EU, menthol cigarettes and rolling tobacco to be banned. Cigs are not touched. Keep fighting the fight. Yeah, really. Menthol cigarettes and rolling tobacco are about to be banned. Here's the thing. I don't want that either for the United States of America. The United I love the I love our country. I love the country we live in and I and I want to live in a country where menthol cigarettes can be for sale. I want cigarettes and menthol cigarettes and cigars and pipe tobacco and vapor products and nicotine products and snus. I want that all for sale. I want to live in the most free country that I can. I think it should be up to the adults to decide. And I don't know why that's such a hard concept to grasp. I don't want menthol cigarettes banned. I mean, I wouldn't care if they were banned, but I don't, I wouldn't, look, I wouldn't fight to keep menthol cigarettes on the market is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if they ban menthol cigarettes, if they banned cigarettes, I would feel like a less free citizen, even though I don't smoke cigarettes. I would feel like, well, they just took a little bit of our freedom away. That's what I would feel like. Uh, keep calling them. The PMTA process is unreasonable. That's right, Stan. I'm going to read it again because I like it so much. Having politicians make vape legislation is like having the Amish decide how the entire U.S. can dress from now on. That's, a, that's pretty damn accurate, man. That's pretty damn accurate, British eyes. Psycho Ranger, very gracious of you. There has to be a better way. There is a better way. Or maybe there's not. I don't know, but there does have to be a better way. Got one more from Stan. Uh, Kristen got it right. No way PMTA. That's the new hashtag we're going with. All right. I like it. No way PMTA. Uh, Channel 808 Life Hawaii. Vape shops need a doorman. Yep. The only cards people uh, before they even get a no card entry. Aloha, Aloha from Hawaii. And thanks for all you do for vaping since 2009. Hell yeah. I Absolutely agree. In fact, the first vape shop that I ever went to in Southern California was Vape Rev uh, in Buena Park, California. And 
That's what they did. You walked in to Vape Rev and you were greeted by a hostess at a podium who would ask for your ID and take your name. And when she took your name and checked your ID, she's like, thank you, welcome. You can go sit in the lounge until your name is called. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. You go sit in this lounge with couches and, and you just hang out and you're vaping and then they call your name and you get to go up to the bar and you, you talk one-on-one with someone about liquids and hardware and whatever you need. It was the best retail vape shop model that I have ever seen. And I would, I, that's the model that I would do for every vape shop. Someone at the door to greet you. Janae, I sure as hell ain't shutting up. You can shut me up. Fuck you. I'm going to say my piece, motherfuckers. Wow, Jeannie, you have quite the little sailor mouth there. You sound like my, I sound like my wife. You sound like Casey Pickle. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of obscenities. Yeah, big fan of, uh, big fan of vulgarity. VMG testing. Very gracious of you. Much love, Nick, for what you're doing. We absolutely got to keep up the fight. Can I please get shouted out for my are my oh my switch story it's a subreddit that collects real life accounts i've seen this i have seen this vmg testing yes you're definitely going to get shouted out for this but i ran across this subreddit on reddit pretty recently and it's r my switch story and it's a real life huge collection of switch stories everybody that went from vaping to smoke or from vaping to smoking shut up nick someone's going to take that out of context Everybody that went from smoking to vaping, share your story on there. Uh, It's very, very cool. Very, very cool, VMG. Uh, Psycho Ranger, one more time. Oh, I tell you, the kids nowadays are dumb as a box of rocks. Yes. I mean, dumber than a box of rocks. Dumber than a box of rocks. Uh, Rick, DC Rally, pre-May 12th. C-137 is ready with my giant yellow sign. Let's keep on vaping. Do we need another rally before the PMTAs? Just say the word and I am in 100%. I'm in 200%. I'll go to a rally. I'll go to another rally in Washington, D.C. No questions asked. It's okay. Uh, Rick, sorry. Giant, sorry, shed time. (laughs) Okay, I didn't even notice. (laughs) Yeah, you never have to apologize for spelling mistakes during shed time. I, I completely understand that. I completely understand that. So let's close out this vlog with, a, how about, how's everybody feel about a random liquid tasting? Huh? 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 Thank you, Timothy Olmstead. I'm very gracious of you. Let's do it. Boom. <laughs> Well, the liquid we're going to be tasting tonight comes from Glacial Vapor. This is black ice. Black ice from Glacial Vapor. Maybe it's because we've been talking about mint and menthol all night. I don't know what it is. I just wanted to taste this mint. And I have a feeling it's going to be minty and menthol-y, but the black in it is either going to be like blackberry or black licorice. And if I'm being the most honest that I've ever been in my life, I'm really hoping it's black licorice menthol. I'm really hoping it's black licorice menthol. I have my hopes up pretty high right now. Pretty high. (laughs) Because I want it to be black licorice menthol, even though that sounds awful. Even though that sounds, yeah, That sounds terrible. I still want to vape it. Black licorice menthol. Give it to me. I'm going to be tasting this out of the Mike Vapes Recurve Dual RDA. Got it all freshly built and wicked up. (gasps) It might be black licorice. It might be black licorice mint. Black licorice mint for the win. Gross. Oh, it's, oh, it was so excited that it was black licorice mint. I never stopped to think, should this liquid exist? Well, the knuckle test was very successful. It's a black licorice mint for sure. For sure. And I am, for one, very excited to try this. I believe this is a three milligram concentration, if I am not uh, mistaken. 
Oh, this is a 50-50 PGVG. Wow. But it is three milligram. But it's a 50-50. That's an interesting choice. Interesting choice. It just means the flavor is going to be really good, but it might be a little bit harsh on the throat. I can't believe this was a black licorice menthol. Like, what are the, what are the, aw, black licorice menthol? Black licorice menthol. I can't wait. I cannot wait to try this. So I got it all loaded up in my Mike Vapes Recurve Dual RDA. And I can't put the top on for some reason. There it goes. I got it. All right. All right, I'm just going to have a toot right out of the gate, inaugural toot. Um, I don't even have any words right now for what that just happened in my mouth. So, ah, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to sit back like I always, with every liquid, I'm going to sit back, I'm going to have a few toots, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with it, we'll come back and talk about it just for one hot minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is... I'm not a vaping a tobacco flavor, but I do have a tobacco flavor for next week, Indian Maine. I see you there. I got a tobacco flavor for next week. So I just tasted Glacial Vapor Black Ice. I'm not joking right now when I say that this juice is just one of the weirdest things I've ever put in my mouth. And I mean, I've put a lot of weird things in my mouth, but this is far and away the weirdest. I don't know what I, I, I it's black licorice menthol, you know, I don't know what I was expecting, but it is black licorice menthol. It tastes like you just put the biggest, blackest jelly bean. And I'm not talking about like, the small little, oh, little jelly beans you get in like a big bag. I'm talking about the honking jelly beans. The ones that are that are just giant. The biggest black jelly bean you can find. That's what she said. And then just put it in your mouth and you're chewing it. And it's so big that it's taking up your whole mouth. You know, you're kind of like, oh God, this is so much black licorice. And then if you took like, some peppermint mouthwash and then just dumped it on your head. Like that's what this liquid is like. 
while you have the jelly bean in your mouth, you're like, mm, mm, you're eating this huge jelly bean of black licorice. You're like, mm, 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 and dumping peppermint mouthwash on your head. That's what this vape tastes like. It's like black licorice peppermint. It's like a peppermint black licorice. And the scary thing is the more I vape it, the more I want to vape it. Here's the thing. This liquid had to have come from Sweden. It's the only place this liquid could have come from is Sweden because they love black licorice there, man. They just do. All of their candy has like a little bit of black licorice flavor. It's like, and some of their candy, some of their candy and I'm using really heavy air quotes though. Some of their candy is actually just black licorice covered in salt. So this juice probably came from Sweden. Doc Blackjack gum. Let me tell you a story someday about Blackjack gum. We'll save that for a getting to know Grim Green story. Yeah, Pluid. Someone here remembers Pluid? There was a liquid way back in the day. All right, well, we're going to end this vlog talking about radiator fluid. There used to be this liquid way back in the day called radiator fluid. Pluid, P-L-U-I-D, radiator fluid. And everybody loved it, and it tasted like fucking black licorice orgy. Like, it was the craziest flavor I've ever had. It was ridiculous. It was so weird. It was like Boba's Bounty. I never understood that liquid either. Radiator fluid. And it was green. That's right, Ruby Roo. It was green. It was the, it was the first liquid I had ever seen that was a non-liquid color. It was green. It was this bright green. And it was called radiator fluid. And it tasted like black licorice. What else was in there? Someone who's vaped fluid. Yeah, the t- tank cracking champion. Pluid is still for sale? You shut up. I mean, don't shut up. I'm just kidding. I'm going to find some of this. Mad Murdoch's Pluid. Juice DB. I am 21 years old at least. Holy shit. No, I can't find it anywhere for sale. If you can find some, try it because it's the weirdest shit you'll ever see. And there's, you know who did a review? You know who did a review for uh, e-liquid radiator fluid? Todd. Hey guys, Todd here. Todd. Todd. He did a fluid review. He did a fluid review. Boba's Bounty. Yeah, a lot of people loved Boba's Bounty. I couldn't, I didn't, Boba's Bounty was super gross. Boba's Bounty was like, chewing on wet peanuts really bad really very bad okay 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 so we're here at the end of the vlog uh let me have some uh radiator fluid (laughs) i'm just kidding uh let me have some black eyes here i'm just gonna take a quick look make sure i didn't forget anything except this this is my favorite thing ever now I think we're good, you guys. I think we're good. We're going to go ahead and wrap this here vlog up. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, uh, don't forget about That's What She Said. They're coming up right after me over there on the Ruby Roo YouTube channel. That's What She Said. They're going to be talking about the uh, the pod ban uh, as well. Uh, I know Danielle will be on that panel. So I know she's going to have some, uh, some insight, some extra insight into what is exactly. I mean, we know kind of exactly what's going on just is so weird you guys it's just so weird so here's what i'm going to leave you with obviously we're not nobody's stopping anything we're not stopping the advocacy we're not stopping the calls we're not stopping the activism we're not stopping the tweeting we vape we vote no way pmta 
That's what we need to keep doing. This little gesture of, oh, here have, oh, here have five more months to stay on the market until we wipe you out with a PMTA, to me is unacceptable and we should not be celebrating that. What we should be celebrating is the fact that we were loud enough and we made enough of a stink that they actually are paying attention. And if you don't think we did that, you're crazy because we did that. You guys did that. You guys were loud enough that they noticed enough to make today's big announcement. And if they think that's going to keep us quiet, oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious because there's no way. There's no way I'm going to accept this pithy little offering of a five-month stay of execution unacceptable to me, unacceptable to me. So keep fighting and remember that no matter what any crooked politician tells you, absolutely keep on vaping. Jeremy V, thank you for reminding me. If you're here right now, guys, go ahead and hit that like button. Just hit it. Yeah, Charlie Baker's public enemy number one, Jay Inslee, public enemy number two, public enemy number three, I guess, is the Trump administration. I'm not really sure. Or the FDA. I mean, the new FDA guy, sorry, this could keep going. New FDA guy's just towing the company line as well. He says the same things that we've heard before. Well, this can be an off-ramp for adult smokers, but we can't also allow it to be an on-ramp for youth nicotine use. Just the same jargon and the same rhetoric we've been hearing. We vape, we vote, hashtag no way PMTA. Anyway, I love you guys and I'm damn proud to be part of this community. I can't thank you guys enough for coming out tonight. So that's all I got for today, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. And no matter what any crooked politician tells you, yeah, damn it. Let me get to my intro. Absolutely, you guys, let's keep on vaping. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. (laughs) 